Do you want to learn how to create your own first-person shooter survival horror game and get access to all of the source code, art assets, sound effects, and music for that game, all running in the latest version of Unity? If so, you should check out the Dead Earth Game Development Course at GameInstitute.com, a Unity-authorized training center. This self-paced course is unrivaled in its detail, with over 250 hours of step-by-step -step video instruction and a moderated forum to help if you get stuck. You will build every aspect of this game from the ground up. Let's look at just some of the features you will learn about. You will discover how to create a multi-weapon animated first-person arm system, just like the ones you've seen in your favorite games. You'll learn how to implement melee weapons, such as axes, machetes, and baseball bats, along with ranged ammo-based weapons, such as pistols, assault rifles, and shotguns. You will create intelligent, friendly, and enemy AI and have your NPCs respond to stimuli such as sight, sound, and smell. You'll implement physically-based, body part-specific damage, as well as ragdoll physics and reanimation back into animated entities. You'll learn how to assign patrol routes to your AI and have them achieve tasks such as opening doors and invoking ranged attacks. In the Dead Earth code base, you can fully customize your AI on a per-instance basis so that they can exhibit a variety of unique behaviors. Whether you want a character to be a walker or a sprinter, a crawler or a bouncer, or even hostile or friendly, that power will be at your fingertips. Of course, no game would be complete without a player inventory system that supports collecting ammo, med kits, and anything else your imagination conjures up. The Dead Earth game world contains dozens of items, all with different behaviors, using a framework that makes it easy for you to extend and create your own. We have cans of food to restore player stamina, health kits and anti-infection kits to patch up the player after an attack, journals that can be picked up and read to advance the storyline. We've even got special items that can be used at crafting stations to repair or even create new types of gear. Command Central here. Report back once you've... Consider the following in-game scenario. The player is unable to access a mission-critical room because the door is locked. So we search out some scrap metal by looting broken machines and then find a sharpening stone in some nearby rubble. Finally, we head off to a crafting station to create a set of lockpicks that can be used to gain entry to that room via the lockpicking system. You will learn how to implement each of these experiences and more. Supporting all of this is a highly flexible looting system. After killing an enemy, you can examine and pick up any of the items it is carrying, including audio logs that, when played, issue new mission objectives. This is the final log entry of Dr. Julia Pearson. But looting isn't limited to just dead bodies. Almost any item in the world can easily be turned into a loot source. Next, while combat is an important aspect of the game, you will also build a visibility-based stealth system so that the player can hide in shadows, evade detection, and plan their attacks. You can even shoot out the lights in a room to dynamically create shadow zones in real time. To navigate the darkness, you'll manage two critical items. First, the obligatory flashlight that flickers and fades as the battery diminishes. Although helpful, your light beam can be detected by enemies. So, for total stealth in low lighting conditions, you'll build a battery-powered night vision system that allows players to sneak around and avoid enemy encounters. You'll also create a flexible mission and quest system to tell your stories and structure your gameplay experience. You'll learn how to design a top-down, real-time map system so that the player can collect various maps scattered throughout your levels and more easily navigate the world. 
And of course, you'll learn how to create all sorts of cool challenges, obstacles, and puzzles. Like fire, which must be navigated carefully to avoid damage. Key cards that must be discovered to unlock new areas. An old generator to restore power so that the player can ride creaky elevators between the floors. Planting bombs to blow open new passageways. Interactive computer terminals with passcodes and file downloads. You'll even have dynamically destructible items like supply crates and wood planks that must be destroyed using specific items. Finally, to put that extra level of professional polish on your game, you'll leverage Unity's timeline system to invoke in-game cutscenes at pivotal points in the game and really ramp up the tension. And of course, you will learn how to implement those all-important secondary scenes, such as main menus, configuration dialogues, and closing credit sequences. And believe it or not, there's so much more in the course that we didn't cover here. So if you're serious about learning how to make your own games, then the Dead Earth Game Development course at GameInstitute.com is simply unparalleled in its level of detail and scope. Join us now and find out how AAA games are really made.